Hey, Faith Win here with wincolor.com featuring rawpigments.co and we're going to be talking about ink mixing. Took us a minute to get here, but here we go. First things first, this is going to be our ink set. And we have the graphical graphical version right here and then we have an actual photograph and then I've desaturated the photograph to kind of show what I mean but the idea is the ones with the lines they're darker than the rest and then a lot of them are either lighter than the rest like those or they're just the lightest of that section kind of a deal like for example this yellow gold wouldn't really be considered a dark ink, but it's the darkest of the yellows. This purple right here wouldn't be considered light, but it's definitely the lightest of the purples that we have. So that's what these are. I'm just categorizing them based on what's around them. So next slide. Um, just clear that real fast. You can see that is going to bother me. Um, I've separated them out based on whether they're deep, medium, or bright. And the reason that we say deep, medium, bright instead of light, middle, dark is because I'm talking about this innate kind of how dark or light the hue is compared to the rest of the colors on the spectrum and the colors around them. They're not shadows. They're not light form shadows. They're just pure ink. So one step further, we have separated them into deep, middle, and bright, kind of based on where they are in the rainbow. Uh, if I did all 12, um, it just gets too confusing that way. So the idea is that if I'm using the red violets or the pinks, then flamingo is going to be the best um, for creating form shadows, which are our middle and light values. Um, that would be these, our best for middle and light values. Anything in there can be really used for anything, so that would be uh, black, dark, middle light. And then these are really best for making blacks and darks, um, so for shadows. And of course you can change that up and do whatever you, you like, but generally speaking, and that's just what this says up here. So that's kind of like a cheat sheet um, if you're not sure which, which color to use for what. And if we take a look now, this of course are the 23 hues or colors around the wheel. And then we have a picture of the raw premium pigments inks uh, shaped like a color wheel. This is our wind wheel, which is the uh, same thing, just a reference for the wall. And what I want to talk about is taking this wind wheel, and it's actually a later slide, but I want to do it first. So, if we look at this, basically on the wind wheel, if we take any three sections, so that would be anything in there, or let's say if we're doing pink, it could be anything in there. If we're doing blue, it could be anything. So three sections next to each other. And then... And here I've kind of broken it, broken it down. Generally speaking, if you stay within three, you'll do all right. It's just the further they are away from each other, like this Laker purple and this uh, bright red are the furthest away, like Laker's right there and that's right there. It doesn't mean it won't work. It just means it's gonna be a little trickier mixing and doing stuff. So in the beginning, I always stayed kind of together like that. So I wanna talk about what I'm calling anal analogous trios, which are just inks from our set that sit very close together. Um, like all three of these reds are very, all three of these reds are super close together. Um, these three are super close together versus like what I just said, where turquoise and Kawasaki are pretty far. So instead I probably wanna do these or I wanna do these. 
it's just safer and it's easier to mix, especially in the beginning. So here I have listed uh, primary and secondary trios for each color. And then, I don't look at that yet. And then we have our tertiary trios. And I do want to note that it, there is some overlap. If we look at the full list of all 12 sections and they're close together trios, you can see that, see like forest green, it's right there and right there, volts in both of these, bright yellows in both of these, agent oranges in both of these, bright reds in both of these, that kind of thing. So there is some overlap. And eventually as you use the system, you will start to memorize which ones are deep and which ones are light. It's actually pretty easy to spot just by looking at the bottles after you've been using it for a little while. These are examples of gradients that I've painted using these trios. The top one, you can see I've used blue, I've used sapphire, royal blue sky, and agent orange from raw. I used agent orange to desaturate sapphire and then I used all three of them in my middle values pure, and then I added white to sky, and then I did the same thing with red violet. And there, there are videos here of me painting one of these if you wanna learn more about it. This is me doing first green, and then I actually did red and green together because red and green are opposites on the color wheel. So with only six bottles of ink, I was able to create all these different colors. Um, there's actually a video of me doing this exact one also on the website. And then what I was doing and what I was just talking about is this is just a explanation of kind of what it is. Um, the idea is that you use um, a deep ink. You use deep inks for that or medium ink, so it's just deep or medium, and then you use all three kind of in the middle, um, and then you use the uh, middle or bright, and basically the idea is that by doing this, you can actually take just three inks and you can get a whole range of value, and that's just a graphical representation of what I was doing uh, with these, these types of things, painting gradients. It's a great way to get to know your colors. Um, to mix browns, there are two browns in the set, but if you want to mix your own, all you have to do is mix an orange and a green together. So for example, this is forest and tang uh, made this brown, and then OG and tang made that brown, and then I mixed um, ancient orange, which is a little lighter, um, and I got two, two really nice browns too. Grays, same situation, except this time, browns and blues will neutralize to grays. If you take a little brown and put it into a full thing of blue, um, if you mix sky and coffee, you get that. If you mix royal and coffee, you get that. If you mix sapphire and coffee, you get that. And then I did the same thing with toffee, which created a little bit more of a green just because it's a little more on the yellow side. And then I also did one downtown brown, which isn't in the set, because I was trying to decide if I wanted to replace one of them. But I ended up keeping coffee and toffee. But you don't have to be limited if you have other colors or other grays or other blues or other browns from other brands. They will do the same thing. And here, down on the bottom, there's just uh, some combinations that I did. And even though there's no gray in the set, you can see I got this beautiful range of grays just from messing around um, with uh, a few colors. Um, I think I had like three blues and like three browns, and I made all those grays, which are pretty cool. And I also want to note that tattoo ink, when you paint it, looks gorgeous. But once it dries, it loses its, its oomph. So if you actually do this, or if you watch the videos, you can see uh, you can see how pretty they look when they're mixing. And then this is just an ink cap layout of how I would lay out my ink. Um, I'm gonna go over that in the mixing videos, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on it. But the idea 
is you put out an analogous trio like we just talked about. So that would be like doing, I would put, like let's say I'm doing blue. I would put out a deep blue. I would put out a medium. And I would put out a light blue or a bright blue. And that's what these three are, except I use red in that example. And then I add a second deep and some white and a complementary color. So that's what you can see over here. It's kind of what I'm saying. So it goes, see this, this says deep ink um, is used for the complementary and the two the two darks. And the idea is that first I take the complementary color and mix it into the deep. Then I take a little bit of my black that I've created and put it into this to make a, sh a shadow reflected light or a dark value. Then I'm pretty much done with that. And then I mix uh, these two colors together to kind of play around in our middle value. And then I add white to one or both of these and then at the end, I have heavy packing white. So there are instructions on the bottom. It's a little, it looks crazy, but once you do it a few times, it's really pretty easy. So this is just an example of how I would lay out uh, my ink caps if I was doing this. It's the same thing I just said, where you have a complementary color, complementary color, and then I've got two deep inks, and then I've got my medium and bright ink and then I've got some white and then I would also have some packing white over here this is the same thing all I've done is I've thrown in a turquoise and I have um, I'm not sure why blue and pink are together but Uh, but yeah, okay, I don't know, I'll have to fix that. But the grid, this one is, this one is right. This one, um, you can see I have a couple deeps, I've got a couple mediums, I've got a light, and then I've got two deeps of the complementary. I've got two mediums, which are forest. That's OG forest, and this is Kawasaki. And then these would be wine red, that's light red, and those are um, bloodberry. And all you do is to make a mixed black, all I would do is pull either one of these into there. Complementary color. To make this into a mixed black, I would just pull this one into here. And then once you have your mixed black created, all you have to do is dip into a deep ink and then dip into the black for about half a second. So you'd be like, dip in here, dip in here, and you're good. Or dip in here, dip in here, and you're good. And then once you do that, you have your shadows, which are your darks. And then these, you don't really use anymore. And that one might've got muddied up too. And now that we're in our light, that means that we can play around with all these colors for our light value or for our middle values. And then once we come into the light, um, but, but for the middle values, you would only mix these three together and these three together. You would not mix complementaries unless you wanted to mute it a tiny bit. And then at last, you would take this white and this white, and you would mix it with probably this and this, or just one of these down here. And that, oh, and I also want to mention white. There's two types of white. There's mixing white, which is usually a little thinner, has slightly less of a pigment count, I think. And it's just it's easier to mix in and brighten colors to make tints. The way to tell, like let's say, um, there's a point at which when you're working on skin, like let's say you start out like this. Basically, basically if you're mixing a tint or a light value, which is gonna be mixing white, um, which would be uh, true white from law, True, true white from raw. There's a certain point where if you put too much white in, when you put it into the skin, it'll disappear. 
That means that you've gone too far and that you should be using packing white if uh, if that's the case. So, and packing white, I don't know, there's two philosophies on packing white. One is to get it in and then get out, one shot it basically, minimal damage. And the other one is to go super slow. I tend to favor the super slow. I find that works out a little better. You just have to be careful. And I also, I think that uh, round shaders, like a nine or an 11 round shader work the best for me. And that's the basic concept is, you can read it a little bit more if you want, if you're curious about white. But once you start to really use white in this way and understand how it works, that was a huge game changer for me. So I highly recommend reading the little section on white ink, which will go over what I just said. And that is actually gonna do it for ink mixing. There are definitely videos up explaining how to mix um, the quick start set as well as a larger palette video once you really get going with this stuff. So once again, my name is Faith Wynn with wincolor.com featuring raw premium pigments at rawpigments.co and I will see you in the next video.